Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, welcome to the show. Thanks, okay. thanks for having me. This is show number 87, uh, Free Will Claims Based on Fears and Desires. And the theme of this show is that a lot of people get that because everything has a cause, free will is impossible. Because our unconscious is where we have our you know, memories, free will is impossible. But they still believe in free will. So we're going to explore over this show why so, why people kind of like, why their emotions, their fears, their desires hijack their reasoning to get this simple you know, conclusion that free will is absolutely impossible, completely wrong. All right, and now you want to start us off? Let's, let's start off, we, we got to start off with what, you know, just the basic definition of what, what people mean when they say they have a free will. Free will is the ability to, ability to make choices that are independent of one's genetics and conditioning. Right, and so like basically um, that would mean that like people who believe that we have a free will would say that our decisions are either completely up to us or somewhat up to us. And you know, they could have acted otherwise. Right. That like if they made a decision, you know, like they they didn't have to make that decision. They could have made a different one. Now, the reason why free will is impossible. Just Many very, reasons. Very right. briefly, uh, one of them. Let's go through the the simple one. Causality is just like you know, if everything has a cause. Think about it. If everything has a cause, every one of our decisions are has to have a cause. Then there has to be a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause, and these causes are always going back moment by moment, and they don't stop. You know, it goes. Well, they stop where your where your moment of conception was the day you were, you know, the sperm. That was the word, yeah. Right, but then you got to realize. Well, then you, it goes before that, but your your lifetime started there. Right, and there was a cause for it. that. Wouldn't it all say we're only it? concerned about our lifetime if you have a free will. We can go back and back and back to the beginning of time and then you got to debate the big bang with the genesis you know we're not interested in debating i'm not interested in debating how the universe started we're just interested if human beings have a free will in their lifespan right and the point is yeah that's if, the point if this chain of cause and effect goes back to before we were born obviously we had nothing to do with well the then choice. it's your mother how she fed you when you were pregnant i mean you know but i'm just interested when you were born do human beings have a free will the answer is obviously no but there's causes before you were born that are affecting you know like the War of 1812, if Britain had won, we would, you know, there's still causes before we were born that affect us. Exactly, exactly. So, or if again, we lost the Spanish American, you know, war or whatever. If right, Columbus just, went this way, not yeah, right. There's still we could be speaking Spanish instead of English easily. Yep, just or French because the French were in North in Canada, yeah. Quebec. Yeah, right. yeah, just, yeah. just it's just the fact that the causal chain of cause and effect stretches back to before we were born. Obviously, no part of us, you know, nothing of what we do is in any way up to us. All right, so let's let's go through some of these reasons now. All right. Um, Basically, some free will defenses arise from desires and fears. Okay, so George, what you're saying is, since you and I discussed before the show, we see it so clearly that free will is impossible. But you are asking me, how is it that so many people just don't get it? Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about oh, now, yeah. right? Okay, that's what the people have to... We're curious to know how something so clear and obvious could be missed by so many. Okay. So you have a bunch of th theories here about why that's... Right, let's go through... All right, a, let's go them. Let's, let's go, go through it. a basic fear. Now, let's start off with just the fact that in 580 AD, St. Augustine, a major Christian figure, he was trying to figure out, wait a minute, if God is all good, why is there evil in the world, right? So, like, his answer to the question, he could have blamed Satan, he could have blamed the devil for eating evil, but he said, well, if God is all good, then any evil has to be our fault, you know, that's how, and so he actually wrote a book, De Libro Arbitrero, with its Latin for on free will. In Christianity in the world, there was no term for free will before this point. So now why, did I, why do I bring this up? If you're religious, if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, if you're like a fundamentalist, you know, Catholic, whatever, and you're taught, you know, by the church by, from an early age that you really have to believe what the church believes, otherwise you risk eternal damnation, think about it. People like people don't even want to like a lot of times question this because they're afraid to go to hell eternally. Let me get this straight. Saint Augustine said God, God must be good. Therefore, if there's evil, it has to be due to free will. I, I missed something. Right. I don't His, get it. Yeah, Augustine's premise was well, God is all good. Well, first of all, that's an assumption. Exactly. It's a premise. Okay. Okay. Let's assume. Okay. So then, what does he say? Then he says, well, if if God is all good, then any evil in the world can't be God's fault. It has oh. to be our fault. 
But then if we had free will, we would just choose to do good, wouldn't we? Why would anybody choose to do bad? They'll go to hell. Exactly. That's a good point. doesn't make any sense. Think about this. If we really had, a, and that's a very strong and powerful point, because if we had a free will, you know, who among us would choose to do anything wrong that would could make us go into hell? Yeah, right. That's what I was just thinking, right. Right. And then the, why do we do wrong? A lot of times, well, we, we can't, you know, we have this part of us that wants to do wrong, even though we know it's wrong sometimes. If we had a free will, we would just override at any time. All right. So, like, so that's one fear. You know, a lot of people are afraid to question this because it's a religious belief. Now, oh, I see what you're saying. It's a religious belief. They grew up and con were conditioned to believe in free will. And if they don't believe in free will, they might go to hell. So it's too dangerous to rock the boat or whatever. Exactly. Okay, fair now, enough. That's, that is a reason, yeah. Yeah. That's a big reason. Now we Your parents believe something and you idolize your parents. You, you respect their opinion. They tell you to believe in Jesus and church and free will. So if you go against that and you might hear the minister say, well, you're going to go to hell if you believe that. That's a big. That's a big thing that right. would keep people from from understanding the truth. Now, my generation was raised in this. Your generation kind of we're kind of like similar generations. But you were telling me about something about young kids today. That, that yeah, I have some nephews and nieces. They're 15 younger, and they say that everyone they speak to doesn't believe the, the heaven and hell things being abandoned. Those are exact words. He's a 15 year old. So right. So think about this for young kids, for people that are coming into this world, and they, they don't believe in free will either. They, they they're getting it. Yeah. Because they have the internet. They they understand. That's amazing. Exactly. So when kids, when people are no longer afraid of suffering eternally, it becomes much easier to override, to overcome these irrational right. religious beliefs. So, so theory number one of why people believe in free will, even though the, the evidence is overwhelming against it, is fear is religion. That's what you're saying. Number one answer is they were raised a certain way in the church or whatever. They're terrified of going to hell. So that's answer number one on the board. Well, yeah, and, and you yeah. know, I can't, I can't say that that's the absolutely number one reason. That's a guess. It's very high. It's very I would high. think so, yeah. All right, let's go. That's very good. Okay. Okay, the next one is, it's another fear. A lot of people think, well, yep. if, if we do away this with this belief in free will, anybody can do whatever they want and they can claim, well, you can't blame me, you can't hold me accountable because like, I yeah. don't have a free will. That's right. So what do you, how do you respond to that? So this is fear of abolishing personal responsibility. Well, I have a theory that, you know, perceived fair exchange of energy, which would only, but everything, people have a fairness imperative. So if you do something like run into someone's car and take their, you know, damage their car, they have to pragmatically blame you because you, you did something to them, but they're not going to fundamentally or ultimately blame you. So they're going to blame you. What did you say? Is a proximate causer or you had some right, other good things? We're the proximate causes, right. So, or the representative, the representative of that karmic, so they'll, they'll blame you. But they'll know deep down that you couldn't help yourself. So there'll still, there'll still be a lawsuit and a suing involved, but no one's going to be going to hell for anything they did. They just need to get their money back All right. or whatever's fair in the situation. So you blame the situation, not the person, but the person goes along with the, the proximate blame or the proximate. So, you, so there's still personal, there's still cause and effect of consequences for your actions. Just nobody's spending all of eternity in hell because they messed, they effed up. Right, and think about what or did whatever, because yeah, what it's conditioning and genetics that caused you to do it. Right. Right. So and people don't have to fear that society is going to fall apart. We we will. But that is a reason. I like that reason. That is a reason why people still believe in free will. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a fear. Yeah. But uh, but as as you explained, chaos, what, fear what of chaos. Is we have to pragmatically address situations. So like as we, with the last show, you know, if you're if you have a son, he comes home late without calling. You still may have to like you know dock. Him yeah, because you were getting upset. That's not fair. If you're getting upset, you don't know where your son. Is. Right, right, right. So the idea is like for people who are afraid that, you know, personal responsibility will go out the window as we abandon free will, you don't have to be afraid of that. Yeah, that's and, a legitimate fear. I could see that. And, and why, why, what's another reason we don't have to be afraid of that? We are hardwired to be moral. In other words, like the Greeks understood this. When but morality is causal as well. Oh, I mean, sure. Moral, yeah, okay. But it's just the idea, like you know, we're we're hardwired to be moral and we're hardwired to seek happiness. So if some if people do things that are wrong that are threatening our happiness, just from that understanding, standing alone, we know that not neither personally nor societally are we going to allow things to to go against the interest of us or or of society in general. Okay, so we got fear of the religious persecution, fear of personal responsibility going away, fear of abolishing personal responsibility. And if you abolish personal responsibility, people are terrified that society will then crumble. Right. So there's A and B there. So you're saying if you don't believe in free will, 
we will still have personal responsibility because, okay, and society will not crumble. Right. In okay. other words, so if people are afraid of um, losing responsibility on two levels, one on the personal level, like not being able to hold, hold themselves or others accountable, but now more on a societal level. People are afraid that if we abandon the illusion of free will that, you know, our criminal justice system won't work. Our whole society won't work. But I want to tell you what I discussed with you last show. The fact that we don't have free will actually keeps society from crumbling because if you actually had free will, remember I said people would wake up one morning and just decide to do things without cause. Like I could wake up tomorrow and say, I want to move to Venezuela and own an oil mine or something, or I want to you know, live in Spain and become a star soccer player. Without any causality, society would crumble much quicker. With, with, if there were free will, there would be no causality connecting anything. There would be total chaos. Right. That's think, the reason why there isn't chaos is because free will is an illusion. It's just the opposite. Yeah, another way of follow, under, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Another way of understanding. Yeah, say, that. talk more about that. I like that. Right, because like a lot of one of the reasons we obey laws, we don't break laws all the time, because that's how we were conditioned. You know, from a very yeah. early age, our parents taught us to be good, our teachers taught us to be good, our society taught us to be good. If we had a free will, by definition, that means that at any moment we can override all that learning and just do whatever we want. Yeah, with free will, all our preferences would be somehow erased at the moment of decision making. It's totally incoherent. Right, and and then we could just like, yeah, we would be free. We have no just preferences. Like so everything, if you had a free will, every choice would look equal. You would have a billion choices. You wouldn't know what to do with yourself. You would just be lost. It's because there is no free will that we're able to function. It's just the opposite, right? Absolutely. All right. So again, that's a fear that society would crumble. Totally incoherent fear. And so, but how will it change, Irrational. like, for example, like, we've got prisons and jails now where you've, it's filled with, like, very unfortunate people. You Those know, are really reconditioning behavioral clinics. I don't want to call them prison. You know, they're just, re, you know, it should be, he was poorly cal calibrated. He had bad programming, but genetics or conditioning. It's not his fault. They still have to go to jail because they're, you, they could commit crime. They could do damage in the real world. They could right. kill someone. So they're going there pragmatically, but no one bl should blame a criminal and stigmatize them as crazy or evil for the rest of the eternity exactly it's and, an unfortunate situation so here's the thing but like, nobody's that we're not saying empty out the jails and psych wards because they I mean, you're not saying that no, that's not nutty. yeah okay now good. but but the, the major distinction why this is important because with our current system now we label a criminal as a criminal and in psychology you learn that your self-identity is a very powerful that's correct motivator think about how badly they're do. feeling about themselves behind bars and in psychiatric right. institutions or they if they consider themselves a bad person when they get out they say well you know society they i might as well act like one <laughs> right exactly it's a motivator so like the the alternative to that when everybody understands free will is impossible sure we we put them in correctional institutions you can fear them you just can't hate them right and and the thing is that they don't fear or hate themselves that's very that's you more know, humane and hum they, that's a, that's a good mark for humanity. Right. They'll they say to themselves, they'll, they'll say to themselves, all right, I was, I was very unlucky. It's not me. I am not evil. It's just you kinder. Know? Yeah. It's a better world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we've gone through the basic fears, you know, of, of why people, these fears. There's over... one more we discussed earlier, that ignorance is bliss. And it's uh, the belief in the illusion of free will could be an invasion of people's paradigms. And if they're doing well in life, Say they're a successful stockbroker or whatever. If you start telling them there's no free will, they'll feel like it's an invasion of their personal, you know, they feel good about themselves for making it in life. So people who are successful may not like the idea that there's no free will because they can't take credit. So they don't want to hear it. So ignorance is bliss. They just want to keep going in their little blinders that I did this, I did this. I'm talking about successful people. No, so they don't want to hear that they didn't do anything. So not knowing is bliss when I when I theorize that the truth should be bliss. But it seems that not knowing about this is more blissful because people don't want to know. And many people that I talk to who are successful, they don't want to even hear about this. They don't care. It's invading their paradigm. Exactly. Think of think let's say you spent a lot of years to like really be really good at I'm something. I'm a good doctor, you're a heart surgeon. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah. And so like, you know, you feel good about that. You feel I did this of my own free will, you know, and all and all of a sudden like We you, come along with our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go and, ahead. And what? You're just like following the script. Nothing that you did was up to you. And so like people when when you confront them though, other people are like, No, I can't I don't want to believe that. Right. But but you know You're invading their paradigm, which works for them. Exactly. If it works, don't if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if they're doing well, 
going through life. They got the house, the wife, the kids, good schools, making money as a doctor. And they turn on this show and we're saying, no, no, you, you're just along for the ride. It was your conditioning and your genetics. You really, you know, they, they don't want to hear that. They'll right. turn us off. So right. that's a reason. So now here's, here's how to address. How do we get through to them? They don't want to watch this show. That's a good question. I'm going to address that right, right now. These people who are very successful with, in certain ways, you know, they want to consider themselves sane and logical and intelligent, okay? They don't want to consider... Especially therapists do this, yeah. Right. Now... Nothing more insane than believing in free will, sorry. Ex that's it, exactly. <laughs> so, like, for the people who, who, like, really need the belief in free will... Yeah, they need like, it like a drug, to yeah. Justify, ...to justify their successes, yes, what you justify. have to say to them is, listen, justify. this belief in free will is absolutely insane. It's, it's like... Total gibberish and nonsense. ...incredibly unintelligent. It may makes no sense. And so they'll like, say you have psychosis. They don't like hearing that. <laughs> no, I know, but the thing is like these people It's a culture war. People who are successful, they're not dumb per se. You know, they they, they got there for But you're invading they, their paradigm. Right. So what happens is they've got what what's known in psychology now is cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. It's like like they've got a belief that they're, you know, whatever thing they did was up to them and they feel proud, all of a sudden you present them with conflicting evidence. Correct. No, nothing was up to you. So they're like weighing this. They're confused for You're a while. You're going to give them a nervous breakdown if you get too far in there. Right. So what happens? What happens? Like the changes are going to take slowly. As like, let's, it's time for the... For the, the kids would have to learn it because that guy that's like 50 years old and success is probably too far in his paradigm. If you start teaching it to kids that you don't have a free will, you have a much better chance. All right, it's like now, learning a new language. Right, right, right. That's a very good point. Sometimes, like, a, there's a statement in science. They say that, that science proceeds one funeral at a time. That means, like, the old scientists... <laughs> never heard that. The, That's brilliant. Yeah, they, they never change their mind. You know, they're, you know, like, all those... So, yeah, so, like, they die out. You get new people coming in who understand this. So, all right. Now, so you've got, like, this... Um, You've got people who, who won't get it, but even them, because like, think about this, like in 5, 10, 20 years, the, just the, the, again, these people are not really unintelligent. You know, we, we, this show is all about, it's not, it's about like these desires. They want to take credit. They want to have a society that works and stuff. So like to the extent that like, that we and, and people like us and Sam Harris and these magazines explain to them, everything has a cause. They've got to get it. They've got to eventually get it. So it may take time. And again, they may not accept it easily, but I have a feeling even people who, who just like really, really are, are, are set into this current paradigm that they're not completely hopeless. They, you know, mm -hmm. but, but it, no, I'm just it, state, stating what are the reasons why people don't let this illusion of free will talk through. Right, That's right. just all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So you got the religious argument and the fear of abolishing personal responsibility and the whole world will crumble, so we handle both of those. And the desire to take pride in what we do is another reason why we can't convince people. It seems like we just can't get through. Because like we were saying, we know that free will being an illusion is so obvious. We're trying to figure out why it is that people seemingly intelligent just don't get it. Yeah. So it's like so perplexing. To, we're just throwing out ideas here. It's amazing. It is. It Mind is. Mind-boggling. It, it's, it's, it's so obvious that there's no free will, but yet people just fight fight us to the... I mean, they just... It's like they'd rather die than admit that they... You know, it's something's going on. It's surreal. And now it's surreal because, like, one plus one equals two. That's basic. That is so basic. Everything has a cause. So basic. Very basic. If everything has cause, all our decisions In have fact, a cause. In fact, when I argue with these people, I don't even feel like arguing. It's beneath me to, like... Exp it's just so obvious. It's like I feel sorry for them, but... We can't blame them. You know, they just don't get it. And it's like, I try to look at their psychological defenses, and that's what we're discussing. And that's a good point, because, again, you can't blame them. You can't blame, if a person can't get this, because, they like, they're it. locked into their fears, their desires, you got to remember, it's not them. They say they have a little free will. No, I know. And again, what's a little free will? What but basically they're saying when they have a free little free will means that like not not everything is up to them, but some things. And how are do up they know them. when they have free will and when they don't? And why do they take it both ways? Because when good things happen, they probably say they have free will, and when bad things happen, they'll blame God or the universe, or you said the other way around. But like, it's double talking hypocritical to just take this issue like I have free will when it's convenient for me to say I have it, and I don't have free will when it's convenient. It's either you have it or you don't. You can't be flip-flopping all through life like that was free will, that was, you know, you're just going to say you have free will when, when, good, when a positive result comes, 
suddenly you have free will. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not consistent right. for and me. Let's, let's go through some of the religious contradictions in this. For example, one of the uh, religious teaching that everybody, a lot of people believe is that God is all-powerful. Now oh, God, don't get me started with that yeah, one. Yeah, so like, think about this. It's so simple. If God is all-powerful, <laughs> that means that what God says goes. You know, that nothing can be uh, to us. Another one's God is omniscient. Uh, address the omniscience. All right. I'm God, say. Choose this hand or this hand. Which one do you want to pick? I'll pick that hand. Okay, so I heard someone say that God knows all our free will choices. If I'm God and I know you're going to pick this hand, it is now physically impossible for you and existentially and metaphysically and intellectually every possible way for you to pick this hand. There's no way, if I'm God and I know you're going to pick this hand, and even if you, you know, you say you have free will, but if I know you're going to pick this hand, it is now impossible. For, see, that's not, God knows everything. So I know you're, you know, that you, you don't have, you don't have the choice. Exactly. Because I know you're going to, so that's, uh, yeah, I think your guy in the, the uh, meetup said, Bill Carter said he met a guy, a Christian guy, and he said, God knows your free will choices. It's totally incoherent. When you argue with people who don't make any sense, I just want to, you know, I don't even want to fight them anymore. It's just so ridiculous. No, would you, would you like to debate someone who said God knows your free will choices? It's not How even can a you coherent, debate that? You can't it's debate not a coherent insanity. statement. I know, I know. So I get that a lot. I know, I know. And again, like, so we're, we just went through an example of in religion. Wait, so why would someone say God knows your free will choice? He has a psychological disorder or defense that he can't grasp. He can't accept defeat that there's no free will. He just has to say God's in control. And yet I, he has to, like, somehow marry the two concepts. And they're not, they're not compatible. Yeah, and, you know, we're just getting God to... can't know everything, and you also can't... One or the other. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. If God knows everything, now if God knows nothing then they can't go on and say that God knows everything. I mean, it's one or the other. Either everything is God's will or then, you know, everything's let's not. Go, so. Let's go through another reason that's not really on the outline here, but we were talking about it before, in terms of, like, why some people get that free will is an illusion, not, some people don't. Um, oh, you want to do the reverse. Well, they would think, no, it's the idea of, like... Uh, like Causality. No, no, no. no. It's, uh, you want, in other words, instead of saying why people can't get it, you want to know why people do get it? No, no. All right. That's a good question. Obviously, all right. And we were talking about this before. It's like the idea that there are two kinds of people in the world. One kind of person goes through life mainly understanding stuff. In other words, like... Concepts. Right. They're presented concepts in school by their teachers and all, and they don't just, like, They don't memorize. It. They don't memorize. Yeah, they don't just accept it, like, that this is the truth just because a book said it, just because my so parents So that's our genetics and causality. Yeah, it's still predetermined exactly. in that person. Yeah. That's people like you and me. And right. We happen to be... We're not lucky or unlucky, but we can't take credit, but I happen to be that way, yes. Exactly. And then there are other kinds of people... Who just recite what they've learned. Right. Regurgitate them, yeah. And so think about it. So, like, with those kind of people... They really haven't had to rely on their analytical skills to get through life. When you say free will is an illusion, they have a knee-jerk reaction. Say, what about the Heisenberg principle? They, you know, they don't think about it, yep. which we all know is indeterminacy, but that doesn't prove free will. But someone told them that. They read it and they re recited to you like they're a genius. Right, right. They didn't think it through. It just means randomness. Randomness doesn't prove it. I see what you're saying. So. so yeah, go ahead. So yeah, no, it could be it could be that with certain people, you know, at a very very early age, uh, age, either through the church, through their parents, through their teachers, they're taught well. Like if you do something wrong, you're to blame. You have free will. It was completely up to you. You're a and, bad person, right? right? And they accept it so completely that they never question it after it. So they're, they're so conditioned that even as an adult. Now these are two magazines that just came out. That one came out in 2011. Cover. We're not in this alone, right? You know, these are two major science magazines refuting free will. It's on the not, cover, on the cover. Absolutely, on the, the cover. These not are to mention the 30 books articles. that have come out. Scientific American Mind. This year, this year, 30, 30 um, pieces, articles in major newspapers. This is, this is completely new because, like, in the years before, like in 2011, there might have been six, 2000. 10 through 2004 altogether, there might have been like half a dozen, okay? So like this year, 2012, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, New York Times, Psychology Today, Huffington Post, Atlantic, The Guardian. This is major. This is huge. What you're saying is more books, articles, and journalistic endeavors have been happening about the myth of free will over the last year as... Like this decade versus, it's just, it's just, it's exploding. We're at the tipping point. Yeah, absolutely. So 2012 had like 100 articles, 2011, 80, and then from 2000 to 2007, like 20. And what about 1990s? It probably wasn't spoken about that much at all. Well, that's the thing. Like, in, for example, 1989, Galen Strawson wrote a book. Right, right. But 
these these academians that he's like they were few and far between back then not just that it's like they they charge 40 50 dollars for the books and their books are like written not for the general lay person for the non-academic they're written for other philosophers so they're all full of like philosophical nonsense they never get it <laughs> and 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 the other thing is like they never they never you know galen strawson actually he's he's a bit of an expe- exception one of the new york times articles that was recent i think um I don't I don't remember when it was but he wrote a piece for the New York Times refuting free will. These philosophers hardly ever do that. So like the the value of an L and, I, and my work, you know, between an L show in Manhattan, let's do a commercial for it. Wednesdays at 11. All right, channel MNN2 every other week is live. Channel 56. You're probably watching it right now. We're not live tonight. Next week we'll be live. Right. All right. So we've got the dead of winter we're going to do once a month. Okay. We've got the Manhattan show, we've got this show, we've got our meetup that started in April 2010. We have our website. And now wrote a book, the name of the book? The Newer Testament. Okay, and I wrote my book. www.thenewertestament.net. Okay, and I wrote my book, the first 18 episodes of this um, show, published it um, last December. Because of this, because of this, that's why you see all this um, coverage on it. And it's like, it's it's world changing. Nothing like this has ever happened. It's going to take a while. Sam Harris, you know, best-selling, three-time best-selling New York Times author. He's a neuroscientist. He wrote his book on it came out in March 2012, and that's to a great extent responsible for all these new articles in 2012. This is like, we've reached, there's, there's no turning back on this. I mean, this is, this is done, it, it, it's too powerful to ignore, it's too impossible to refute. Okay, so like, uh, so basically we're, we're going into a new era. Um, all right, so like, I hope you understand why, you know, there, the, the kinds of reasons that some people don't get the, the yeah, that's really what the Today Show is about. That we're trying to figure out why people just can't get it because it's like we don't under, you know we're very intelligent. We just can't figure out how people could just not get it. It's so simple. Right, and 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 the, the simple answer to that is like some people allow their emotions, their desires and fears to hijack their reasoning. But isn't the pursuit of truth what being a human being is all about? Shouldn't truth be the ultimate bliss? It should. It should. But ignorance seems to be the bliss. It doesn't make the universe has compelled people to not really want to get this up until now. I know, I know. The next 10 years are going to be very different and the rest of... And the, okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, End the show. absolutely. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. We will be back to explain why we don't have free will in other episodes. Thanks again.